today I want to talk about commit processing, which can be a serious problem for many applications. Now, Oracle's commit processing mechanism is a fundamental part of the database and instance architecture. It hasn't really changed since release six, and the rewrites to release six introduced the concepts of undo and redo that, in my opinion, make Oracle the best database yet developed in the known universe. So how does committing work? When you issue a commit statement, your session hangs while the log writer flushes the log buffer, including your commit record, to the online log redo log files. And that's really the definition of a committed transaction in the Oracle environment. The redo stream has all the change vectors of the transaction and the fact that that transaction was committed. Once that has happened, your session wakes up after hanging on the log file sync wait event, and then you can do some more work. That means that you can never work faster than log writer can flush that log buffer to disk. The wait can in fact be pretty disastrous. Look at this AWR report. It's an old one, but it shows the problem quite dramatically. During this 10 minute period, the instance was generating 34 megabytes of redo per second and processing 472 transactions per second. This is a pretty busy database. And now look at the wait events, the top five timed foreground events. The worst one was log file sync. And that was costing us nearly 40% of our DB time. The next one, it's TXNQs. Well, this wait event is probably caused by sessions not releasing locks because they're waiting on commit. So those two together, more than 60% of our DB time is being lost for those events. That's a pretty disastrous situation. Now, conventional wisdom says that there's not a lot you can do about this, short of redesigning your application, perhaps quite dramatically, or maybe throwing money at the problem with better storage technology. However, there is, in fact, another way. You can, in fact, tune the commit process. The default behavior is this. Write immediate wait. Commit complete. This is the alternative. Commit write batch no wait. Hey, that was quicker, wasn't it? Now, the default behavior is what I described earlier. Log writer writes immediately it receives the commit record and your session waits until it's done. In the alternative mode, log writer writes when it thinks it will be optimal, which probably means a smaller number of larger writes, which will use the hardware more efficiently. And your session doesn't wait at all, it just carries on working. The effect can be dramatic. I'll create a little procedure that performs and commits 10,000 transactions. So create or replace procedure commits as begin for I in one to 10,000 loop, update one row, commit it, and iterate. I'll set timing on set timing on and I'm going to explicitly set my session to use the defaults 
with these two parameters to make absolutely sure there's no mistake. So, default settings, commit logging immediate, commit wait, wait. Then I'll run the procedure. Execute commits. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half seconds to do the 10,000 transactions. Now I'll put my session the other way. Logging batch, commit, commit wait, no wait. And run the procedure again. Less than half a second. That's about 12 times as fast, just for changing a couple of parameters. We had better repeat this just to make sure there are no side effects caused by, for instance, caching. So I'll put my session back to the default of immediate wait. Run the procedure. One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half seconds. Modify it to the alternative mechanism of batch no wait, and again, less than half a second. So the results are repeatable and highly effective. So to conclude, why wouldn't everyone do this? Well, there is one possible issue. In some bizarre circumstances, you could lose a transaction. Imagine the case where your application issues a commit, and in the very short time before that log buffer is written to disk, what if the instance were to crash? That would mean that your application would think that the, the transaction had committed, but in fact, the transaction will be rolled back during the next database startup, because there will be no commit record in the Rudy stream. This is highly unlikely, and in most applications wouldn't be a problem in any case, but it is possible. So in an ideal world, if commit processing and Rudy generation is the bottleneck for your environment, you would tune up the application or the hardware. But if that is either not possible or not good enough, tuning the commit can be very effective. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel.